we're going to be talking about key switches, pros and cons, the two logical options that we would have use key switch or not to use key switches, but then also the again, like the hybrid in between option, which would be a combination of both. So key switches, what is it? There are some libraries that come built so you can change articulations and you'll have when you click one of the low notes here, this is the C that you can't see, unfortunately, but it's gonna trigger a short note. The next one is gonna trigger a little bit a longer note. The next one, a little bit longer staccato. The next one, legato. Tremolo for the next one, trills, half a step and whole a step. Etc. So we've seen a series of articulations, one, two, three staccatos, the legato, the tremolo, and the trills. We have access to those very easily. Just load one patch and use the lower notes generally, sometimes for the lower pitched instruments like the double basses or the bassoons or contra bassoons. We're gonna have the key switches higher in register to avoid overlapping. That's the approach of some libraries. All the libraries, they're gonna move the key switches even lower. And that is a little bit incom inconvenient because you have to switch an octave in your keyboard. And so that's the very basic explanation of what a key switch is. So with that being said, pros and cons. We're gonna talk first about not using key switches. Two good things about not using key switches is one, more flexibility when it comes to routing. I like having routing flexibility because when I've got three, 400 tracks, I like to route them to different stems. Just for organization's sake and for when exporting, it gives me the ability to export, let's say, just the strings or just the short notes for the strings or even the short high notes or to separate all the orchestral instruments and all the high hybrid synth instruments. But when it comes to the strings, at least I like to have separation later on in my mixing desk, I kind of thing. I'll have the two, three, four hundred tracks, but then I like to have somewhere where I can mute just the shorter strings or solo just the shorter strings. And I like to have one track, a bass, where I can just hear or listen or solo the longest strings. This is a very obvious one, but sometimes I may have a library. I like it very much. I like how it sounds, but the staccato maybe doesn't have the detail of sound that I would like. I'll try another library, ah, still not there. Another library, ah, still not there. And I'm like, okay, maybe at this point I need to start combining or stacking or layering sounds or two libraries. Maybe this library has the aggression that I want for this staccato. I like it very much, but it's a little bit too big and it lacks a little bit of the attack and the bite at the beginning of each note. Maybe I combine the staccato from this library and let's say the spiccato from this other library overlay it on top. Maybe now I get this type of sound that I would like to have. I'm going to try and maybe I do get the type of sound that I want. And that's what you can do when you have all these tracks separated. You can combine things, right? Fair to say, what I just described is a very common thing to do and there are libraries that already know that within the one patch they are gonna give you the ability to overlay different articulations so you can have a patch based on key switches and they're still having like a second layer of key switches that you can overlay on top of the other key switches you can do that with contact there are some libraries that are built to do it that way and there are other samplers that give you even more flexibility the bni instruments it gives you a matrix you can create key switches you can start Key switches is very powerful. Not as powerful, something in between these two. We've got a Halion that gives you the ability to create those key switches and then a second layer of key switches. So you can do things like that. When you have option A and option B, option A being the opposite of option B, you don't have options. Look for the third option. And usually there's always in betweens. So not using key switches, meaning yes, having separate tracks like this, it's gonna give you more layering ability. The bad thing about not using key switches, meaning having separate tracks, is that you're gonna have a massive a bigger template and this sometimes can be a little bit well you know it's a lot of tracks i deal with this every day i've got ways of making it look smaller just showing the tracks that i'm using at the moment i can make it look a little bit bigger i can see even more detail things like this and we're not going to talk about this now because this is more about um, daw configuration but there are ways of dealing with the big template option two is using key switches so yes it's going to be smaller and more organized because you're not going to have so many tracks you're not going to have all these staccato one staccato two long notes pizzicato harmonics you're not going to have it like this so for example this just to give you an idea these are the strings using one library very synthesized not even extended articulations just the short notes long notes 
Jessica Tremolo, etc. The access to the same articulations, even more articulations, with key switch approach, same thing here. It's just kind of like 10 tracks, maybe. And that makes it easier to navigate and it's more organized. And I'll tell you another thing that's cool about it. When it comes to exporting MIDI, when you are done composing, we're gonna record this baby with a live orchestra because we've got the budget. I'm going to export everything. Usually it's, it's a two-step process. You're gonna do a little bit of MIDI cleanup in the sequencer. You're gonna export the MIDI into Sibelius or Jorico Finale. And then you're gonna do a little bit more of cleanup there. And so imagine having a template like this where you have lots of tracks and you've got short notes and the shrills and the long notes. You have to first merge everything. You have to merge all these tracks and then you'll have to stack them like this, one on top of the other. And then you have to merge these tracks. And now you're gonna have all this in one MIDI region. In this case, obviously this was violin two and was this, this was viola and this was violoncello. But imagine that this was just all violin two and this was violin two staccato, violin two legato and violin two trills. And then at the end of the day, when they are reading the score, they just need to see one stuff. They don't need to see different stuffs. It would be crazy uh, because it's just one instrument or one section. And so the bad things, the cons about using is which is that you're gonna lose a little bit of the layering capability even though again there are ways or samplers that will allow you to do that and less routing flexibility now the solution the best of both worlds use key switches but separate the long key switches and the short key switches this one is violin one articulation short notes this one is violin one articulation long notes simple as that i love key switches i use them all the time i like them because it keeps everything more organized and sometimes it allows you to perform a phrase kind of like in a way that feels more natural instead of having to do the staccatos now and then separate a track for the long notes or legatos and then move to the trills but you can do this in one pass that is the theory again in the real world it is hard for you to perform a line that has lots of changes and you be switching while performing the line it's hard enough to get it right and get the dynamics going and all that and then on top of that the key switches right you're composing like this doing dynamics and then doing the key switches like this it's too much when you are using key switches and you load one of these key switches patches you can imagine obviously it's gonna take a lot of ram right because the staccato doesn't take that much ram but long nose that much but then the legato in there and then you know the trills and if you've got like trill legato and tremolo legato you've got all these things you're gonna have a massive patch we're talking maybe 500 max or 1.2 gigs of ram two gigs of ram for one patch and you are separating them and having like violin one key switch short notes and then the same thing your two gigs plus two gigs four gigs the good news is that when you in contact load a patch and then you load that patch again exactly the same it doesn't take twice the ram it uses the ram that's already loaded in your system so you can load a patch three times and then just label it differently and route those three different tracks to different buses so that is what i do and so i've got the key switches with long notes and here we have the legato the harmonics maybe the trills, maybe the tremolos. Sometimes you may want to have the tremolos here instead because, you know, the tremolo, it could be like an unmeasured tremolo or a measured tremolo ta -ta 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 type of thing, a 16th. And you may consider them more like short notes than long notes. Why do we separate short notes and long notes? Usually, it's because then when we are mixing, we're gonna use different reverbs. If we want a little bit more of a modern sound with a little bit more separation and clarity, we're gonna use more reverb for long notes and uh, less reverb for short notes. Are we creating different spaces with that? Shouldn't the strings be all in the same place? Yes but whatever depending on the sound like if you want to replicate a realistic orchestral sound yes 100 percent yes if you don't care about that and you're just sculpting a hybrid sound then you don't care that much about that why do i need to group the tracks if i could export just every separate track and then mix it like i would have the violin short notes the violin long notes why do i need to group tracks stems and all that i do that because myself as a composer when i am mixing my own music i do not have the time to do a mix with i don't know maybe 40 60 70 tracks i don't even have the organization like the mental capacity to do something like this i could but it would take forever it's not my job that's pretty much it i'm gonna just explain one more thing there are some libraries that come with the short key switches and the long key switches but most of the times the library will come with a series of key switches all the key switches that they offer and then you can activate or deactivate the amount of key switches that you want to have for this type of music is when i like to use key switches it sounds like this And 
I like to use key switches for this type of thing where we're gonna have something like. Libraries will offer you a different ways of key switching. The traditional one is you're gonna use the lower keys or whatever, but that's sometimes velocity based. The higher velocity, the shorter the note or the other way around. Now, in this library in particular, it does zaratatara. I wanted the first two notes to be legato and the other ones to be separated. Then there's a long note, etc. And sometimes you can try and build all these while well, the first two notes are legato. And then the next one are two different types of staccato and have multiple key switches. And you didn't see that many key switches here, right? It's not that much going on. It's like, uh, I don't see the key switches going here. Sometimes the theory is like, okay, I should do this. but And that's what a musician will do. But the library, sometimes it's just that it's not able to do something like this. Because when you're transitioning from Zara to Zara, the second note, when you key switch from legato to staccato, it's not gonna trigger the legato. The last note is not gonna have the release that you would like to have. Blah blah blah. Series of things, right? Or maybe the library is able to do it in a realistic way, but it takes forever for you to program something like that. And sometimes there are ways in between that's just gonna make it the results gonna be 99% the same or 90% the same, and you're gonna work much faster. So what was the solution for me here instead? I didn't use key switch. I didn't use layering. I used an option that the library gave me, which was the marcato. That solved the first problem because it's kind of like a fast, it's not like do -re -re -do -ra, right? It's like -ta 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 -ra. I need it kind of like a fast attack. I need the definition and bite at the beginning. So I used a marcato patch. The library gives me the option of spiccato overlay, which basically this with the spiccato, without. And that was the solution, right? It gave me the ability to do this. No key switches involved, so no problem to me. Just controlling a little bit dynamics here. Key switches or no key switches? No, it's a combination of the two. 